Hey everybody, it's How To Tuesday today, and we are going to talk about fly casting. A lot of people that pick up a fly rod, the first thing they want to do is cast it as far as they possibly can. Now, you don't have to cast as far as you possibly can. I want to preface this podcast by saying that being able to cast the entire fly line is a great thing to be able to do but not that many fish are caught at that distance. So it is not necessary that you be able to cast 100 feet or 110 feet to be able to catch a lot of fish. Most fish are going to be caught between 30 and 60 feet in saltwater. Okay. However, distance casting is important because it develops control of the fly line. And if you can cast 100 feet with pretty decent accuracy and you can do it consistently, you're going to be developing the skills so that if you need to cast 50 feet, you're going to be able to do it much more comfortably, much more confidently. And for that reason, I do agree with practicing distance casting with your fly rod. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I was on a podcast just the other day called The February Room, and I want to thank them for inviting me over there. And when they were doing the research on me and whatever kind of uh, background they needed, they looked up and one of the things that's on my bio is that I cast a standard five weight fly rod and line 130 feet, 131 feet, I think, to win this one particular casting competition, best of the West casting competition. They used to be done at the ISE shows and they would give you, you could pick any off the shelf five weight rod, nine foot five weight rod. So everybody's got the same type of, of rod or at least the same weight class rod. And then they would give you a reel that had everyone use the same fly line. And it was a Cortland fly line. That fly line was 90 feet long. And then it was a distance casting competition. So the, the way that you cast um, 130 feet is obviously you're going to have to unroll the leader. There's another 10 feet there. So now you're at 100 feet or, or 99 feet maybe. Um, and then you're going to need to cast some backing. Okay. So casting backing in a regular fishing situation is completely uh, unnecessary and, exact, and actually um, not recommended at all. And that's really the trick to being able to cast a, a real long distance is to be able to separate the backing and the fly line so that they fly out together. So we're going to go over a couple of tricks that you can use that will definitely help you to cast farther. And then we'll go into some extreme distance casting to where, you know, you're, you're going to try to cast uh, a, a rod as far as you possibly can. Now, the reason that I like the five weight as a distance casting rod is because it it makes sure it 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 is it actually um, requires that you use good casting technique because you may be able to muscle a lot of line out with a with a ten weight or a twelve weight, but you're not going to be able to pull off the same mistakes with a five weight. In fact, if you have too much line in the air, the five weight will collapse and it will not either throw the line backwards or throw the line forward. So you have to learn a technique, which is shooting the line and shooting the line is your most important distance casting technique. Now, everybody that has cast a fly rod has seen the line go back and forth in the air. And a lot of people will struggle with distance because they will start um, putting a slight slightly more line out in the forward cast and slightly more line out in the back cast. But a lot of people, when they're first starting out, they're only, they're only adding line on the forward cast. Well, you can do that so much until you start to lose control over that line in the air. Now to get a really good distance cast with a fly rod, it actually is extremely similar to how you would get a good distance cast with a spinning rod. So imagine that you have a very heavy spinning rod and a very light lure. And when you come forward or, or when you go back, that lure is not heavy enough to put any bend in that rod. And when you come forward, it barely throws it out and it doesn't have enough velocity to pull the weight of, uh, to pull 
the, the line out behind it. Okay, the reverse can also be true. If you have a very heavy lure and you have a very limber rod, when you come back and you go forward, the rod doesn't have the backbone to throw that very heavy lure and it just kind of collapses and makes a mess. Okay, however, if you can get the right rod matched with the right line, matched with the right lure, when you go back, you will get a good bend in the rod, just like a bow and arrow that is fully pulled back. And when you come forward, you will launch that lure at a 45 degree angle and it will pull the lightweight line out behind it. The rod will recover from that and shoot it out just like a bow and arrow and you let go of the line and it takes off. A fly rod works exactly the same way, just a little bit differently. The weight of the lure is spread out through the weight of the fly line. Okay, so if you have a very, very light lure, that would be the equivalent to only having 10 or 20 feet of fly line outside of your fly rod. And if you try to shoot that line, you don't have enough physical weight for that 10 or 20 feet, even if you have a perfect loop shape and you let go of the line at the right time, it's not going to pull the line out behind it. It's like that light lure. Okay, it, and, and conversely, if you have too much line out and you come forward, it'll just make a mess because the loop shape will, will, will collapse and it won't be able to carry the line behind it. So if you can imagine that the perfect weight lure and the perfect weight rod of a spinning rod are the same as a fly rod, except that that lure is not compressed into a six inch lure or a three inch lure, it's spread out across 30 or 40 feet of line okay there's a physical weight to that line and when you get about 30 or 40 feet of line out that's the designation that the fly line manufacturers use for the weight of an eight weight or a nine weight or a 10 weight line it's the physical weight of that forward portion of that line and that's how you determine whether it's a what what weight line it is okay by the physical weight. So if you want to get your fly line to shoot out as far as you possibly can, the trick is to get enough line out of the rod tip when you're going backwards and forwards in the air using your double haul that when you hit a perfect loop on the forward cast, you can let go of the line and the loop will continue to propel forward and out hopefully at a 45 degree angle, and it will carry behind it the running line. And if you do this properly, it will carry behind the running line till the rod, till the line snaps tight at the reel, or you continue out with backing. Okay. And eventually gravity takes over and that line starts to drop down and, and fall. Now, if you're in a competition, what counts is where the leader unrolls. So it is very, very important for you to unroll the end of that leader. Now, this is where it, it actually is a big-time fishing situation. If you throw 100 feet of line out there, but your leader is back here at 75 feet, it never unrolled, and the end of the fly line didn't unroll, that's a terrible cast. You're not going to catch many fish like that. But if you could throw a 50-foot cast and have the leader unroll, you're going to be in, in much better shape, right? So it is really, really important, and it's a great skill to always be watching where this leader is unrolling when you are, when you are casting in the, in, in the practice, in the grass, in the football field, on the pond, wherever you're, you're practicing. You want this leader to unroll fully and straight. You don't want it to fall off to the side. You have no accuracy like that. So as you start to develop distance casting skills, it is also very, very, very important that you practice distance casting skills with the, the leader unrolling at the end. And then what you do is you don't just strip in the line and, and, and cast again. You walk out there and you see, did it unroll fully? And the difference between a record cast of 131 and most of the other casts that I threw, which would be in the 120s somewhere, is that I unrolled the leader at the end. I got a good, I got a great cast and the leader unrolled. And that's what gave the extra 
link there. So the trick to this is that you want to be able to carry as much line in the air under control as you possibly can. Now, this is this actually does pertain to fishing and not just distance casting. The more line you can carry in the air under control, the further you're going to be able to shoot the line. Okay? But because there's wind, because there are other factors, sometimes you can carry this amount of line. Maybe it's 50 feet. You can carry 50 feet of line in the air once or maybe twice, but then the timing gets off just a little bit. Maybe the wind blows a little bit, and that once or twice now, it's not so good on the third time. It's really not as good on the fourth time. It's terrible on the fifth time, and a lot of people try to throw it out there then. You've lost it, okay? You're not going to regain it. Once you have lost that loop shape, it is incredibly difficult to bring it back to a, to a beautiful loop shape that looks like a bullet that's going to carry out all the rest of the line. So the real trick to the distance casting that we're going to go over today is shooting line. And when you're first starting this, you can, you'll learn how to shoot line on the forward cast. And I'm assuming that if you're learn, trying to shoot line, you already know how to double haul. Double haul is, is absolutely crucial to this. And you, you definitely need to double haul. There are plenty of videos on, on YouTube about teaching you how to double haul. So if you don't know how to double haul, stop this right now and go and learn how to double haul and then come back when you, when you can. If you can double haul, then what you're looking for is to be able to hold a controlled amount of line. You can start with 40 feet. So let's say you're, 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 you're pretty good. You're, you're able to control 40 feet in the air and you're keeping that 40 feet uh, at a static distance. So you're working on your loop shape and you're working on that forward shape to look like a bullet and to be nice and sharp on the end. And that sharp loop will, will be enough. It'll have enough momentum to pull the line out behind. And so you stop on the forward cast. And as that loop clears the front of your rod tip, you're going to let go of the line with your left hand a little bit and let it shoot through your fingers. And you'll see the line will pull out just like a spinning rod pulls, just like a spinning lure will pull the line behind it. And it will, it'll, it'll take off out there. Okay. So that at that point will be your maximum distance until you learn a couple other little tricks. The next trick would be to hold a little bit more line. So if you're able to hold 40 feet of line in the air and you let it fly, you're going to be able to cast, I don't know, maybe 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 you can get 60 feet out there. But if you want to get 100 feet out there, you're going to have to carry more line in the air so that you have more physical weight to be able to pull that line out, just like you put a heavier lure on. If you want to cast further, you have to put a heavier lure on your spinning rod. That's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to increase the amount of line that you're holding in the air. Okay. So you can do that as a pretty good caster. Okay. Now I'm going to hold 50 feet of line in the air. And maybe you can do that once or twice and then you let it fly. And now you're casting to 70 feet. Okay. This is where the problem comes. Okay. Now I need to hold 60 feet of line in the air. Okay. Well, now this is harder. And some people can do it and some people have a hard time with it. But then it gets to 70 feet. Can you hold 70 feet of line in the air? And at, at some point, just physics take over. And it's really hard to hold 70 feet of line in the air on a forward cast and then on a back cast and then to put it out there again on a forward cast and then shoot the line and maintain this perfect loop shape. That becomes very, very, very difficult. So you want to practice as much as you can by doing this and shooting the line on the forward cast until you get good enough to where you can no longer hold that line in the air. Control. So this is the real, the real part, the heart of this whole distance casting tip, is that you have to learn how to cast and shoot line on the back cast. Okay? And the trick to this is that if you need to hold 70 feet of line in the air before you shoot that line, to make it go to 100 or 110, or maybe you need 80 feet of line in the air to go to 120 or more, okay? That's going to be really hard to get it out there and then 
make a back cast, and then make another forward cast and keep that loop shape really good. If you can do it, fantastic. Most people can't. I can't. So the way that you compensate for that and overcome gravity and overcome physics is you're only going to hold that amount of line in the air one time. And it's only going to be on the back cast. So in other words, I'm going to get my 30 feet of line out and that's going back and forth. I'm going to add to it. Now I'm going to have 40 feet and I could add to that on the, on the forward cast or the back cast. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to get to 50 feet and I'm going to get to a place where I'm like, Ooh, this is almost too much line to hold. And whatever that is for you, maybe it's 50, maybe it's 70. Okay. Whatever it is for you, maybe you're a strong caster and you can hold more line. Maybe you're a weaker caster and you can't hold quite as much, but what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you've got consistent, sharp loop shape on the forward cast and on the back cast. What you're doing is totally under control. You're going to make a final forward cast and you're going to make a big haul and you're going to go into your back cast. And let's say that you have 50 feet of line out. You're going to make your back cast. And then as that loop is clearing your back cast, you're going to let some line run through your fingers. You're not going to let the line go. You're going to make an okay sign. It's going to run through your fingers and you're going to let 20 feet out on the back cast. This is crucial that this is your final back cast. Then you'll feel that line go through there and you'll feel what about 20 feet feels like. You'll clamp down on that line with your left hand. You will extend back with your right hand and you will come through and haul hard. And that 70 feet of line now will come forward with a good loop shape. And this is where you let it go. Don't make another cast. You let this one go. And you let that one fly. And if you've done it right, it's going to fly a long way. Now, this takes some practice. And learning how to shoot line on the back cast is a tricky thing. It, it really is. But when you learn how to do it, you are going to become so much better. And, what, and, and like I said in the beginning of this, it's not necessary that you throw 120 feet. But when you can do this consistently... And you can get to, to 80 feet or 90 feet or 100 feet or 110 feet regularly with whatever fly rod you have, whether that's a five weight or a 12 weight. You're going to be able to, to, to do these same principles to get to any distance very, very quickly. You're going, to, you're going to eliminate three or four false casts because you're going to make your roll cast and you're going to be at 30 feet. Then you're going to shoot 10 feet on the back cast. Now you're at 40. You shoot 10 feet on the forward cast. You're at 50. You shoot 10 feet or 20 feet on the back cast and throw your final cast and you throw to 80. That's how the, that's how the best casters will do it. And there's line going out on both sides. It takes a lot of practice, but that's, that's a much more efficient and effective way, whether you're trout fishing in a stream or you're fishing for tarpon on the flats or, or you're, you're trying to, you know, catch a sailfish. It's, it's kind of all the same. And the fewer false casts that you can make and the, the more velocity you can get out of that line with proper loop shape, the more control you're going to have over your cast, the more accurate your cast is going to be and the, the more distance you're going to get out of the cast. Now, a lot of people will just use this as a party trick. Like, can you, you, you know, everybody starts drinking beer, or standing on the, standing on the sandbar or on the beach or, or, or you're on the bow of the skiff. Let's see who can cast further. That's fun. It's great when you can cast further than your friends. That's awesome. So use this as a party trick or use it as, um, a, a tool to get better at your mid range casts. And that's what I, that's what I use it for. I mean, I like party tricks and don't, don't get me wrong. I'm a very competitive guy. Somebody wants to have a distance competition. I'm down. Let's do it right now. I practice this a lot. It's fun. <laughs> you know, it's fun to have a distance competition, but at the same time, I also know that, that like archery guys do the same thing. They may never shoot an animal at a hundred yards, but they shoot at a hundred yards because shooting at a hundred yards gives them way more confidence at 40. And if we can cast at 100 feet regularly, you're going to have tremendous um, confidence in casting it at 40 or 50 or 60. And that's, where, that's the sweet spot. That's where you want to be really good. So in order to be really good at 60, 40, 30, you don't actually have to be able to cast at 100. I hope everybody understands that. That this isn't 
I'm not saying that in order to be a great caster, you have to cast at 100 feet. I'm just saying that if you can, you can use that skill to become much better at the distances that you're going to cast the most, 30 to 60 feet, occasionally 70, occasionally 80. You might catch a fish at 80, maybe. But for the most part, the casts are shorter, and the more control you can have over those 30 to 60 foot casts, the fewer false casts you can make, and the more accurate you can be, the more fish you're going to catch, right? And then if you can pick that line up and recast it again quickly and accurately, you're going to be able to catch a lot of fish, all right? So I've had, I've had requests for this before. One of the reasons why I haven't done it is because I, I didn't know how we were going to do the video portion of it. it in, and we need that needs to be on the water. And, you know, when we have all the big cameras and everything, we're usually filming saltwater experience. And um, we need to set aside time for this. And I will set aside time for this to do a video on exactly what I'm talking about. And I'll mark the fly line to where you can see the different distances being shot out there. That would be the, the, the way to do this. Um, and I'll, I will do that. I'll get around to it. But I hope that this audio version um, kind of I walked you through. And the real key is to practice holding more line in the air and then shoot the line that you're going to, you know, for your final cast. It's the last time. And it's the only time that that much line is going to be in the air. You're going to come forward and you're going to let it go. Okay. That's going to help a lot. So I'm sure you're going to have questions about this. I probably get lots of questions about it. And, and I, that's fine. I, I enjoy talking about it. You can text 305-930-7346. I'll be happy to try to walk you through it better if, if I didn't do such a good job on this one. Uh, it was our first swing at it. And distance casting is something that everybody wants to do that as soon as you pick up a fly rod. So I get it. I understand. And hopefully this will get you some extra distance. It takes a lot of practice. So get out there and practice. And uh, also clean your fly line. That makes a huge difference, especially if you, as you've been practicing over dirt or grass or, or someplace like that. Those fly lines, they get real dirty, real fast. And if you clean that fly line, it'll fly way better. And then, you know, it's, it's a good idea to have a practice line and also to have your fishing line. Because when you get this perfect new $100 fishing line, um, you know, you, you, you don't want to be casting that in the grass. So have a practice line and then have your have your line that you're, you're going to be fishing with. And um, that's, a, that's a good tip as well. But keep that line clean and that will make a big difference on your distance as well. All right, that's How To Tuesday for this week. We'll talk to you next week. See you.